hey everyone welcome to another video and in this video let's talk about the sum and the sumx function in dax and before that i want to talk about the difference between the sum function in excel and the sum function in dax so let's go to excel where i have already created this small data model so if i click on excel you can see that i have color quantity and the net price column so in excel if you want to use the sum function you can simply open equal to and then simply write sum and it accepts multiple arguments so it is up to you how many arguments that you want to provide but the first one is necessary and the rest one are not compulsory so let's say i want to sum the quantity column so i can select the quantity column and then close the bracket and if i press enter it gives me 7 which is actually the total of the quantity column and let's say i want to sum the net price column so i can write sum and then select the net price range and then close that and it gives me 50 and if I select that, you can also see that 50 is getting reported at the bottom pane as well. But the sum function in Excel is much more flexible. So in the sum function, we can provide maybe one range, more than one range, single cell, maybe 10 different cells. So if I select quantity and then provide a comma and then select the net price column. And if I close that, you can see that that sum returns a sum of both 7 and 50, which is 57. And if I select the whole range, I get 57. And let's say I do not want to sum the whole net price column and only want to sum specific cells of that column. So what I can do is simply write sum. And let's say I, I can select the whole quantity column. And in the next argument, I'm going to select 20. And in the next argument, I can select five. And if I close that, I should get 32. So if I press enter, I get 32. Now the whole concept of Excel is based on the intersection of rows and columns such as A1, B1, C1, D2, E10, F12 and the whole Excel works on that logic only. But in DAX, inside Power BI, there is no concept of particular cell such as next cell, previous cell, a cell towards the left, a cell towards the right because internally DAX doesn't know what is available in the UI. So if I go back to Power BI, DAX doesn't know that that it is being called by an application which is Power BI, which has a certain kind of UI such as columns, rows. So therefore, there is no concept of A1, A2, B1, B2. Therefore, DAX only works with columns and not with a particular cell. And in case if you want to some particular cell, there are some workarounds, but that involves writing complex logics. But in this video, we are only going to look at the sum and the sumx function. So in case if you want to sum the quantity and the net price column, we have two options. Either we can create a measure or we can create a new calculated column. So first of all, let's take a look at how we can create a new measure. So simply right click on the sales table and choose the option of new measure. And then it will open a formula editor where we can write something like sum of quantity. And you can also notice that in Excel, it is not necessary to provide the name of the formula that we have created, but in Power BI, we need to write the name of the formula that we are writing. So I'm going to write sum. And if I open the bracket, you can see that I get an tooltip which says sum column name. But in Excel, we have seen that that tooltip was actually delimited by a comma, which showed us that number one, number two, and number three, but that is not available in Power BI index. And if I want to sum the quantity column, I can simply write sales and then open my square bracket. And if I write Q, it gives me the suggestion of the quantity column. And in case if you have multiple columns that start with Q, then you will see the list of all those columns in that IntelliSense. And now I can press tab so that I can auto complete the code. And if I close the bracket and press enter, right now you cannot see anything because we have created a measure and not a physical column in that table. So if you want to visualize the result of measure, simply go to the first report view option. And you can see that I have a measure here, which is sum of quantity. So first of all, I'm going to create a card. And in that card, I'm going to drag the sum of quantity measure. And you can see that I get a seven. And similarly, if I want to sum the net price column, I can create another measure. So I can write, let me just zoom in a little bit. So I can write sum of net price. So I, as I've already done before, I can write sum of the sales. Let's press tab, open bracket. If I write N, I get a suggestion and I can close that. And if I press enter, let's create another card. 
and in that I can drag and drop the net price column. So I, you can see that I get a 7 and a 50 as I was getting inside Excel 7 and a 50. And in case if I want to sum both columns, what I can do is create another measure. So I can write sum of both. So I can write sum of either sales, sales net price plus sum of sales quantity. And if I close that, close that and press enter and let's create another card out of that. So let's drag and drop. So you can see that I get a 57. And since we are creating a measure, we can actually also replace the code that we have written with a measure reference. So instead of writing the sum sales net price plus sum sales quantity again and again, so we are actually duplicating the code in this measure and as well as in the both measures that we have already created. So instead of doing that, what I can do is simply call that measure. So I can write sum of net price plus sum of quantity. And if I press enter, I get 57. Now let's take a look at another way of summing both numbers in the table itself. So if I go to the data view and what I need to do is go to the table tools and add a new column to this table. So I'm going to write sum of quantity is equal to sum of sales quantity. And if I close the bracket and press enter, you will see that I get a warning which says that the name has been already used. So I cannot create two objects with the same name. So what I need to do is provide something that will actually create uniqueness on in that name. And if I press enter, I get seven for each cell of that column that has been attached to the existing table. And let's create another column so I'm going to name it as sum of net price and that will be sum of the sales net price column. So let's close the bracket and I'm going to write price and two. And if I press enter, I get a 50. And similarly, I can create another column which can be sum of both two is equal to sum of sales quantity plus sum of sales net price. And if I press enter, I get a 57. So as we have already seen earlier, instead of duplicating the code, we can actually reference the code that we have created earlier. So I can write here sales net price two column plus the sales quantity column, which is also the sum of net sum of quantity two column. So if I press enter, you can see that I still get a 57. So that is seven plus 50. So let's go back to Excel for a moment so that I can show you the calculated column that I've just created is exactly similar to writing equal to sum and then selecting the whole range and then making sure that the range is actually absolute. And if I press F4, it will add the dollar sign before the column and the row reference. And if I close that and press enter, you can see that I get seven for each cell. And similarly, I can do that for the net price column as well. So if I select that, press F4, and press enter then it gives me a 50 and then I can add 50 and 7 which will give me my third column which will become 57. So let's move on and let's take a look at the sumx function and before that let's see how we can actually solve a particular problem in Excel that we are going to replicate in Power BI with the help of sumx function. So let me just remove the steps that we have already performed and I can remove the 7 and 50. So let's say I want to create the sales amount in Excel. So what is the easiest way of doing that? What I can do is simply write quantity times the net price. And once that formula is confirmed, I can press enter and it gives me 10. And then I can simply drag that formula to the next rows by pressing control D. And you can see that 20 times two is 40, five times three is 15. And then I can simply press alt and equal to, and then it will give me the total of the sales amount for the whole table. So let's go to the Power BI for a moment so that we can actually replicate that sales amount calculation by using the sum function. So if I go back to the report view and let's create another measure so I can write sales amount. And it is up to me if, you are, if I want to create the code from the scratch or simply use the existing measures. So I can use the existing measures. So what I can do is simply open my square bracket and I can write sum of net price times the sum of quantity and if I press enter and create another card out of that so let's place it here 
and I can drag my sales amount measure in that card and you can see that it returns 350 which is definitely not the correct amount because if I go back to Excel here we are getting 80 which is the correct calculation because we are multiplying the quantity times net price again and again and again and again for each row of that table that's how we are getting 80 but in Power BI something different is actually happening that's why we are getting 350 so what is the reason the thing is when you use the sum function we are not actually creating a row context between the two columns that we have used so in easier term you can assume that first the DAX is actually summing the quantity column and then summing the net price column and once it has the result of the summation of both column then it multiplies the result that it has obtained after summing quantity and the net price so the sum of quantity is actually 7 and the sum of sum of net price is actually 50 so if you multiply 50 by 7 you get 350 so that is definitely not the correct number because we do not want to multiply the sum of one column with the sum of another column what we want to do is multiply each row and then finally sum the result that we get after multiplying both columns so let's go back to excel for a moment so that i can show you the kind of calculation that we are trying to do so if i go back to excel so what i'm trying to do is let's open some product function and in the first argument i'm going to provide a, uh, quantity and in the next argument i'm going to provide net price and if i close some product and press enter you can see that i get an 80 so what is actually happening if i select this range and press f9 and do the same operation on a, another range as well so what is happening is 1 is multiplied by 10, 2 is multiplied by 20 and so on and so forth. And after that multiplication happens, some product sums the result of that multiplication. So this is exactly the same calculation that I'm trying to do in Power BI. But in Power BI, in DAX, there is a concept of row context. And since we are actually summing the columns individually, we are not able to create a row context between the both quantity and the net price column so let's go back to power bi so to see how we can actually create that row context manually so in the report view i'm going to create another measure or maybe i can change the code of this measure so i can comment out by pressing control and backslash and here i'm going to write sumx over the sales table so you can also see the tooltip it says sumx table and then an expression so in the first argument sumx accepts a table and in the next argument we need to write an expression that actually either can belong to the sales table or can be a complex expression as well so in the row context i'm going to write sales so first of all you can see that all the columns of the sales table are available once i start the iteration on the sales table by using the sumx function so i can write sales quantity time sales net price and if I close the sumx function and press enter, you can see that I get the correct result, which is 80. That is the multiplication of the quantity and the net price. So let's try to understand what is actually happening in this scenario with the sumx with the help of a diagram. So I have already opened Microsoft whiteboard and I've already copied the data from Excel. So you can think that in Excel, when we are using quantity time net price, we are actually multiplying one times 10 2 times 20 but when we used the same operation in power bi we were getting a different result because we were actually multiplying the sum of quantity with the sum of net price which was 7 times 50 that's why we were getting a 350 but when we used the sumx function we actually created a row context between all the rows of the quantity and the net price column so let me just remove everything for a moment so when we used the sumx function which is sumx we created a row context programmatically which was 10 times 1 2 times 20 1 times 15 and 3 times 5 after this result was computed inside the memory the sumx function after iterating this table and multiplying all the columns that we have provided in the expression argument once the result is computed that is multiplication it finally sums the values which is 10 times 1 2 times 20 15 times 1 and 5 times 3 which actually becomes 80 so that is how the sumx function is actually working in dax now if you do not want to use the sumx function but still want to return the same result which is 80 what you can do is go to power bi and then in the data view you can create a new column 
which will be multiplication of the net price and the quantity column. So you can name it as sales amount CC, which is short form for calculated column. So here you can simply write sales quantity times sales net price. And if I press enter, you can see that for each row, I get the sum, which is the multiplication of quantity and the net price. And in the report view, what I can do is create another measure. So that will be sales amount measure. And then I can simply write sum of the sales co column, uh, sorry, sum of the sales table and the column will be sales amount two. So let's write sales amount calculated column. And if I close that and press enter and let's create another card visualization. So I can write here sales amount measure. And if I drag and drop, you can see that I get the exact same result. So a common question that is asked a lot of time is that when should you use a measure and when should you use a calculated column? So in case if you want to create a physical column in your table, you can use a calculated column option so that the result can be stored physically. And in most of the cases, you would actually use the calculated column for slicing your data. For example, you can actually create some groups such as high, low and medium income groups. And then based on that, you can actually slice your net price or the sales amount. But unless you want to do something like that, I would suggest that you actually rely on creating a measure because a calculated column requires a dedicated space in your RAM so that it can be stored and it actually consumes your memory as well. But the measure will actually only rely on consuming the memory and the CPU during the query time. So in case if you go to the report view and then you let's say change the filter context of that report or make any modification in any slicer or any visual in that case and during that time only the measure will be refreshed and then only it will use the RAM and the CPU. But the calculated column will only consume the RAM and the CPU during the refresh time. Once your data is refreshed, only then the calculated column is also refreshed unless you change the code of the calculated column. Another reason of creating a measure over a calculated column is that as you can see on the screen, just to create one single calculated column, we had to create two different intermediate calculated columns which all require dedicated space in the RAM and in small amount of time, your model will grow huge in size. So if you want to avoid increasing the pressure on the RAM, you can actually rely on creating a measure, which is generally more fast and quick approach than using a calculated column. But in case if you want to slice a data, calculated column is always the best option. And I would also say the only option that you have. So that was a quick video over the difference between the sum and the sumx function in DAX. And I will see you in the next video.